VIP Access VIP Access with Aniko and Africa Loud. I'm really excited to be talking to an individual that I really adore. I think most of the times on this podcast, I talk about artists I love and so on and so forth. But um, this particular one, I feel like um, is one artist who really deserves her flowers. She's been part of a lot of other artist projects that you might have known of, or even big continental projects like Coke Studio Africa. And I feel like we don't do it as much, but we should be acknowledging her talent, her creative, and just her warm soul. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Mayonde on my podcast hey. today. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi, babe. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Oh my I'm God, good. it's so great to see it's you so again. Good to be here. Yes. To Long have you here you. on my podcast. <laughs> yeah. And you're just such an amazing individual. You always give me really great vibes. Oh, thank oh, you. The That's beauty. So nice. The beauty is out of the world. <laughs> uh, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I love it. This is so good uh, for my self-esteem. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm blessed and highly favored. Hallelujah. I love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where we're going to start. Like, mm. I would like to start maybe from Coke Studio Africa because that's mm. when I got to know you yeah. more and better. And you were um, singing background vocals at Coke Studio Africa. And yeah. you've done this so many times well you would be singing background vocals for, for other artists, mm-hmm. even just the ba- just the band. Yeah. Um, how have you managed to, you know, be behind the scenes, but at the same time not for not forget about your own yeah. self and your own craft? Yeah, I guess Cook Studio was such a great learning place because um, it's important to have mentors, to have people to look up to, to... Uh, you know, in the Kenyan music industry, a lot of the times you're just on your own learning how to do this thing. There's no school you go to. Mm-hmm. And so I thought being a background vocalist would be a great way to get into the industry. Because um, a lot of the artists I love and admire, when I'd watch like the behind the scenes or their background stories, that's where they started singing backing vocals. So I was like, oh, that's where I should start then. Um, but also being very aware that you can stay there forever. <laughs> and having to invest in your own artistry, invest in your own craft. Um, So, yeah, whatever you earn from uh, being a backing vocalist, you also pour into your craft. So it was even in in Coke Studio Africa that I was able to have the financing to put out my first record, uh, which was Magic in the Air. Hmm. Which dropped, I think, in 2015. And that's the same year I joined Coke Studio. Yeah, so that's so cool that Mm -hmm. you put you know, the money you made back to invest in yourself. That's Mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, it's, I guess you just have to learn (laughs) how to work the system and grow as an artist. Mm. Um, And that's the route I took. And I learned so much from Cook Studio Africa. My goodness, because we were working with like the biggest acts in Africa. Yeah, and I learned so much about pop music there because initially I was a soul, more of a soulful artist. And Mm. then I learned about the pop game and I was like, what? (laughs) <laughs> so it was an interesting journey. And I guess that's, that's why your um, EP, Purple, when it came out, yeah. also th- I, it had more pop mm-hmm. than what we had previously known of Mayonde. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was, like you, could, you could hear the influences. Uh-huh. I was trying to explore what Kenyan pop is because, you know, at Coke Studio, the Nigerians came with their Afrobeat, or the South Africans came with their house or Kwaito. And so the Tanzanians had their bongos. So what is Kenyan pop? And Project Purple was kind of me. Revisiting. Revisiting. Popular Kenyan music. Kapuka was such a thing, like with Ogopa and um, that whole era. Oh my God, that song. Which song? (laughs) Chini kwa chini. (laughs) So I was exploring like Kapuka because I thought that was the most authentic Kenyan pop sound. Yes. And yeah, I was. And you see, like you were just that. talking about it, and I, my mind literally went back to the EP, uh-huh. and it literally went back to that melody and that song. That's so dope. That right? It's somewhere in your mind. It is. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> so that's really dope. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after the two, you know, projects came out, mm-hmm. um, I mean, there was a couple of years up until this year when mm-hmm. you have also another collaborative project mm-hmm. with uh, Modoni and mm-hmm. uh, Polaris, mm-hmm. which also, it, and the project is part of Perform Music in- Incubator. Mm-hmm. Would you at least mention to me how that came about? Yeah. I think it's, maybe it might have come about uh, with the fact that you were in Perform 
Mm-hmm. Bef- uh, I, I think a year back. Yes. Okay. Um, then you came back again. It was right after the pandemic. I was just like, wow, this music thing doesn't seem to be working. There's a missing link somewhere. It's not making financial sense. Um, am I going to be a musician anymore? I really don't know. And then Perform Music Incubator came up mm-hmm. and it's like this music business school almost, but they also support you to make music and to put on a showcase. So that's really how I got into Perform Music Incubator. I was trying to figure out the business side of things. And yeah, now that we're doing phase two, um, we're really putting our efforts into making an album and we'll have a big show at the end. But it's it's interesting collaborating with Mudoni and with Polaris because they're such amazing artists and also balancing out the business side of things, which a lot of artists really don't know. Mm. So yeah, it's been great working on this project with them and we have such amazing eclectic sounds that are coming up and being able to experiment. That's one big thing uh, that Perform Music Incubator is allowing us to do is to experiment with different sounds, work with like some of the biggest, best Kenyan producers that I've always wanted to work with. So it's exciting. It's an amazing sound. I can't wait for everyone to hear what we're working on. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm. Um, how would you review your experience like working with Jab, mm. just a band for those who know? Yeah. <laughs> we call them Jab sometimes because you have voiced some of their songs, mm-hmm. you know, and I feel like you've been part of, you know, their success mm-hmm. and um and, and their success story. And I, I feel like you a lot of people didn't know which voice mm-hmm. that was, mm-hmm. but I knew that voice. So I just want to give you your flowers and, <laughs> you know, give you your moment yeah. to talk about, you know, having had a chance to collaborate with such a legendary group yeah. and band. Yeah, they really are legendary. And yeah. they're like a one in a million, <laughs> like Kenyan uh, group, honestly. I learned so much from working with Just a Band, from being a fan of Just a Band about authenticity, about creating your own lane, uh, about making the music that you want to make and that the people who um, are your people will find you <laughs> yeah. pretty much. Yeah. So it was great working with them and also um, they added to my CV in that way, being able to say, yeah, I worked with Just a Band or I traveled with Just a Band. It's one of those things that added to my career and... Mm. I'm grateful that I was so close to them. You know, when you're in the moment, you don't realize (laughs) how special Mm. it is. And then now when you look back, you're just like, whoa, I was a part of this thing that's so amazing. So uh, always great influences in my life, just a band. Getting to work with Blinky and Jim, Um, especially working with Jim Choo Choo was so amazing because it feels like we are so aligned musically. And yeah, I'm grateful for those Mm. opportunities for sure. And they really did build me up. Mm. And how how is it every day, you know, like being married to an artist, Mm -hmm. you know, living with an artist Mm -hmm. and living with a legendary member of (laughs) Just a Band? (laughs) Like, are you always or sometimes, you know, talking about music, trying to make music Mm -hmm. here and there? Or or do you just not maybe talk about the music while you're at home? But yeah. I always wonder the dynamics of yeah. two musicians living <laughs> together and two being artists. together. It's it's very cool uh, to be able to get each other and to be able to bounce things off each other and share your projects. It can be a bit scary <laughs> on my <laughs> end because I really... Um, I I admire his taste. He has a very high t- taste level. So I'm always worried <laughs> that he won't like what I make or I can tell if he doesn't like what I make even if he'd be like, go babe. <laughs> I can tell if he's not like, woohoo. Yeah. Because um, then he yeah. wouldn't want to be too harsh. You know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you're on the right path. <laughs> yeah, but I can really tell when he loves something. But it's nice to have someone to bounce things off of and someone who gets the creative journey, the artistic journey. Mm. And yeah, it's it's amazing to have an understanding partner who's supportive. Um, 
I, I think I really got lucky there. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. So this is my favorite part of this podcast. Like mm-hmm. who is my own day? You mm-hmm. know, like if you were to describe yourself as an individual and also as an artist, who, who are you and mm. you know what are your main inspirations and influences? Yeah. So those are two things. Who am I as my own day and who am I as an artist? Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. Those are two different mm-hmm. things. So which one do you want? Both. Who am I both? Yes. <laughs> who is my own day? Um, that's a question that I've been asking, I've been answering, I think for the past five years Mm -hmm. or yeah, pre-COVID 2019, it's 2023 now, four years, four, yeah, Mm -hmm. my math is good. About four years. (laughs) Yeah, about four years. Because in 2019, I really got tired of pursuing this dream, felt like the dream died. And then that's when I realized, oh my gosh, if I'm not an artist, who am I? If I'm not pursuing this thing with all my heart and soul, who am I? I really felt like my identity was my career or my art. So when that breaks down, you really have to question yourself yourself and be like, who am I? And if this thing that I've been chasing for so long doesn't work, what am I going to do? What else is there? So I've been answering that question over the past couple of years. And my answer, the most honest answer, would be I am a child who is growing up. I feel like I there's a point in my life that something happened and I kind of got stuck there mm. and I didn't really grow up. But facing all that chaos made me realize, wow, I'm a child pretending to be an... I'm cosplaying as an adult, but I... I, really, I need some growing up to I do. I need to grow. I need to heal those inner child wounds. I need to work on myself. So I would say I'm, I'm a girl who's growing up now. Yeah, that's the most honest answer. Oh, that's but, so beautiful. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I feel like it makes me look bad. But anyway, no. As an artist, I would say, my own as an artist is this eclectic being who likes to play with different sounds, who sees music in colors, who is very adventurous and wants to try different things and doesn't want to be in a box. Mm. Yeah, that's why. I'm what is your artist. heritage? Because yeah. I think someone from your, so, some people from your family are from Rwanda. Or are yeah. you um, full Rwand- Rwandese? Yeah, I'm half uh, Kamba, uh, which is Kenyan, a Kenyan tribe, and half Rwanda. And my mom is from Rwanda, and my dad is from here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but did you? Were you born and raised here? I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. Mini Manzi wa Nairobi (laughs) had. (laughs) Representing Nairobi. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. And, you know, growing up, um, what was growing up like? Like, Mm. did you have a a family which was supportive? Yeah. Were your siblings also supportive of what you wanted to do? Did you always want to be in the music industry? Um, Okay. When I was a child, I knew I wanted to be a dancer for Janet Jackson. (laughs) And then... Her brother, Michael, would see me dancing for her, fall in love with me, and then we'd get married. (laughs) Me, that was my dream as a child. I'm like, why did I want to get married to Michael Jackson? Anyway, that was my dream. Um, And then as I grew older, actually, my dream was to be an ambassador, like to be a diplomat. My dream was to study international relations at USIU. I just I had this rich auntie who was a diplomat. Uh, Hey, diplomat. Wow. Diplomat for... uh, (laughs) <laughs> Rwanda to Kenya and her life was just so bomb I was like that's what I want to do but when I cleared high school I really had this passion for singing and I was like oh let me try to be a backing vocalist and it, it's this dream that kind of evolved mm. so something that I really wanted my whole life like I want to be a singer yeah it kind of found me um because I was a church girl deep <laughs> I was one of those babes who grew up in the church and singing in church is a big thing. So found my passion for music really in high school. And when I cleared high school, I was like, I'm going to pursue this. But it's not really a dream that I'd had since I was a kid. Mm. My family, um, they were pretty supportive, but it wasn't something that is a career. Like, it's a hobby, please. (laughs) Go to college, university, get a a good, stable career. So there's a bit of friction there. Um, but I found my way. I, I did my thing and they've supported me where they could. Mm. 
But I was definitely the black sheep there. Like no one else in my family was like pursuing a creative career. I come from a family of professionals. So they were just so worried for me. Like, what are you doing with your life? Excuse me, please. You need to get a job. So that was tricky. But navigating that has had so many lessons, to be honest. Hmm. And it's interesting you 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 know talk about some of your earlier wishes for your career, like mm-hmm. being a diplomat. And I feel like you somehow have been able to live that dream through mm-hmm. your music. Mm-hmm. Like even when you went on tour out of Africa, you know, mm-hmm. it was one of the biggest tours I've seen well organized across Europe. Mm-hmm. I don't know which other um, continent you guys went to uh, beyond that, but mm-hmm. so many countries. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how was that experience like? Or for those listening and might not have followed, mm-hmm. could you take, could you paint a picture of what being part of Out of Africa tour um, yeah. was? What what was Out of Africa? Yeah, so we're uh, pretty much promoting Kenya as a culture destination, like for, for tourism, not just our sites and our beaches and our mountains, and now as a cultural destination. Mm. Like come and experience our music, come and experience our cultures, our different cultures, all the different tribes. So we put together this show and we're going on tour in Europe. And it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Um, getting to perform every night in a different city, in a different town, seeing how developed the arts are um, in Europe, how they have theaters everywhere. Every small town has a theater or every big city has multiple theaters Mm. and seeing that people come out to the shows and just, yeah, having that skill of performing every night was a great experience, honestly. Like we really grew musically and then also being around it's it's almost rare to perform every day when you're back home. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's maybe once a week or once every two weeks. So it's not like every single exactly. day. Exactly. So the discipline to do that and also building that muscle of, you know, your voice, taking care of your voice. Um it was a phenomenal experience. It was a bit strange that the people putting together the show were not Kenyan, <laughs> right? So there's a bit of friction there because why are Dutch people putting together a show about the culture of Kenya? And then also the people in the cast were such big names, like there were big artists in there. So we weren't just going to take anything you see. There was a bit of pushback, like, no, nah, that doesn't feel Kenyan. No, nah, mm. I don't know about that. So there's a bit of tension when it came to that production. And also experiencing that, that mm. there's politics or that there's drama. It's not just, we're one big happy family and we're going on tour. Like, when it comes to business or when it comes to productions, there's always like yeah. pros and cons yeah. and I guess experiencing those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think after you came from that tour, you mm-hmm. attempted to, to start a music group or did you guys actually start a music group which was really short-lived? Which one? I don't, I don't know. know. You you had a girl group. A girl group. Or was that the intention? Did you announce that you were going to be in a girl group? Oh. After, Where did I get this Africa? from? I think I after know. that. Yeah. Yeah. Who else was in the in the in the tour? You Anto was Africa. there. Antonio So was there. Kamze Moatella was there. Um, um uh, uh Amelina. Amelina, that's the name I was looking Amelina. for. Amelina. Amelina, the artist, Patricia Kihora was Patricia there. was there. Um now my mind is just scanning. It's, it's okay. Like, oh. it's okay. <laughs> Didn't you and Patricia have a group? Yeah, oh, so yeah, Patricia. Oh, that's what you're talking yeah. about. Patricia Kihara and I, so and so. Yes, yeah, so. Was it only two of you or someone else? It was the two of oh, us. Oh, I thought there was yeah. a, a third yes. person. Yeah, we tried it out for a little bit. We performed a little bit, but life kind of took us in different, different yeah. tangents. Yes. Okay, cool. But are, are you keen to be in a girl group or whatever other group again? Or would yeah. you just like to? you know, test the waters for collaborative projects, but still remain as, mm. like, as a solo artist. Yeah, well, I'm, I feel like I'm so open to anything right now. I'm, I'm really 
going with the flow of the journey. Mm. I guess with Perform Music Incubator, it, we're kind of a girl group, like yes. Mudoni, the drama queen, Polaris, and I. But I'm definitely open to being in groups to collaborate with different people. Mm. I, I feel like my the clear dream I had before of being a solo artist, I'm not too sure about that anymore. Mm. Um, but... Yeah, I still make music on my own. I'm still putting out uh, singles on my own. But I'm open to whatever journey this yeah. music thing okay. will take me on. It, it, it had to do with COVID period. Okay. Because you spoke about, you know, having to redefine your identity around mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, so many of us had to do the same. I had mm. to do the same. Mm. You know, I had to question myself because that time there was no work. Mm -hmm. so you'd just be sitting there like you know yeah. thinking about your life yeah. and I started thinking oh my god what do I do like with the whole day or with the whole weekend mm -hmm. I was so used to working all the time and mm -hmm. having meetings all the time and then I started to appreciate my time mm -hmm. so when things that came back then I, I then I had boundaries I was mm -hmm. like I don't work on Saturday or I don't do uh -huh. work meetings on Sunday but mm -hmm. I didn't even realize up to that point that I needed my own space, mm -hmm. you know, so it was a very crucial moment, I think, for, for so many creatives, so many individuals. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, since then till now, mm -hmm. if you look back, is it you who has changed or do you feel like certain things in the industry has changed? Because mm -hmm. you're saying it reached a point where I, I, I just was questioning, like, do I want to be in this industry? It's not making sense. Yeah. So is it making sense now or you're making it make sense? <laughs> An amazing question. Yeah, it's funny because um, I started asking these questions in twenty around mid-2019. That's when my life slowed down. And then it's like the whole world joined me <laughs> in COVID. So you had even started before COVID. Before COVID. Wow, I was you like, are ahead. Who am I? What am you I? What's happening? <laughs> what am I pursuing? Why am I pursuing what I'm pursuing? And just like stopping. And then the whole world joined stopped, me. Yeah. The whole world stopped. But at least you kind like, of prepared welcome. yourself. Yeah, it's like, welcome, everyone. <laughs> to sit with our thoughts and feelings together. Um, but then I, I learned a lot um, coming out of that, and especially going into Perform Music Incubator and seeing the holes I had in my career, seeing the things that I lacked, the knowledge that I lacked, mm. especially when it comes to business. There was this... I'm thinking that I'll just be great at my art. And then as I grow as an artist, the business people will come, the publicists will come, the, like the faith that all the things that you need will come to you, right? But the way this industry is set up... <laughs> it's not like that. It's not like that. And you just having to face... Uh, the wishful thinking, having to face where you are a bit delusional and understanding that, hey, I, I actually need to understand the business side. I need to understand how to market myself. I need to understand how to build my audience, how to capitalize off of that audience. And it's there's no magical person or label or, I don't know, entity that's going to come into my life and fix it. I really actually have to figure this stuff out and for some people it does happen but it doesn't happen for everyone yeah. and so you can't live your life waiting for this savior you kind of have to save yourself so I guess that's the biggest lesson I've learned so I'm making it work because now I have the tools now I have the knowledge now I have a team because of perform like I am able to have the support I need mm -hmm. and also the know-how mm. of how to do some of the things I really didn't know how to do, like how to, how to distribute your music, how to promote it. It's not just a post on Instagram, right? Yeah. So yeah, that's hey, pretty much that is we are. So We're making profound. it make sense. <laughs> that is so profound. And, and I love that you're that honest because I feel like there's always different levels to everyone and everything. Mm -hmm. So even when you find that you've made it in one space or one country, 
then there's another country, there's another space. So mm-hmm. I feel like life itself and the industry itself is always a learning mm-hmm. for me to, you know, I always think I know until I meet some other PR people or collaborate with other agencies mm-hmm. and I'm like, whoa, there's yep. really different levels that I'm even unlocking. So mm-hmm. um, I'm happy for you to, you know, to be in this space. I, I would be so sad if mm-hmm. my own days, you know, would never sing again or mm-hmm. would quit the music industry because I'm such a fan. So mm-hmm. I'm really happy things happen the way they, they did and you're mm-hmm. here now and you and DQ and Polaris are killing it. <laughs> um, so so how do you see, you know, the next couple of um, years or the next phase for Mayo, mm-hmm. even for like next year? Yeah. Like what are some of the projects you would like to do or some of the things you'd like to put your, your creative um, input in? Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely still want to make music, but it's now with the understanding that music is not the brand. Right, <laughs> it's just yeah, one it's aspect. Like the, it's like the driver of it's the business, the driver and the brand, of the business. and every other thing. Exactly. Yeah. So, really wanting to flex that business muscle, that digital marketing muscle. I love it. Understanding that I have other gifts, um, and it's the whole principle of ikigai, like doing what, doing something you love that you're passionate about, doing something that makes you money, having that balance of. Music doesn't have to be everything. I don't have to make it my bread and butter. I shouldn't expect it to feed me fully. I can have multiple um, streams of income. Mm. So really growing in that way, like using my other gifts. Um, yeah, understanding how I could have product that's not just music. Like, okay, are we going into merchandising? Mm. Are we going to have a line of something? Like just... How are you going to use um, your brand to build yourself up, even with the music? That's mm. the thing that's bringing people to you. Then, yeah. now that they're in your yeah. store, yeah. <laughs> what and, are you going to do? Yeah, and that really reminds me of um, of Pilani Bobo. She's a South mm. African artist who was on this podcast yeah, a couple of... I watched um, the show. You did, you yeah. did mm-hmm. and she. I loved how she was saying, like... Mm-hmm. Artists from time to time needs to, need to put together conceptual sounds mm-hmm. or projects or EPs or three songs as a as 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 one, mm-hmm. just for purposes of you know using it as a driver for something else for yes. a tour, mm-hmm. for merchandise, well, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's a good way of looking at your music. Mm-hmm. So then you t- cease to see it as something that exists for listening or only on the DSPs, yeah. but you now start to look at it as something that can get out of the, you know, digital platforms mm-hmm. into another form yeah. in another way. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And it also takes the pressure of the music having to do a certain thing, like uh, having to be a number one song right. or having to be a number one artist. Right. It's re- really dependent on your audience, the audience that you've garnered, yeah. whether the song has... 100,000 views or 500 views is irrelevant. Yeah. It's actually how you market it, how you use the, con- how you think about conceptualizing yes, and yes. packaging it. it. It really takes the pressure off the music having to perform a certain exactly. way. Exactly. For instance, the song might not have been a number one hit on the radio or didn't have so many views on YouTube, but mm-hmm. it could maybe be licensed for a film. Yes. And you could make a good amount of, of um, cash on that. Because mm-hmm. I remember when I was in South Africa last, um, one of the artists was speaking at a, at a conference where I was, I was and she said that the richest South African artists are rich off of tour, like mm-hmm. someone like Black Coffee yeah. and the licensing. Those exactly. two, yeah. And those, the richest artists from the licensing, they're not even popular artists. Mm-hmm. It's just other artists. So it's so important, um, you know, for me, for this kind of conversations to come out in this podcast so that those who are listening can also find ways of diversifying whatever they're creating. Even if you're not a musician and you're creating yeah. something else, how can that something else exist outside of its norm and, you know, create an, an, a, a revenue stream for you. Mm-hmm. So thanks so much for sharing that. Um, I want to wrap up, but before mm-hmm. I wrap up, mm-hmm. I want to ask you to give t- um, a few tips to, I, I would say, um, okay, give a few tips to staying on your path. Mm-hmm. What kind of tips would you give to an artist listening? Yeah. Um, and 
sometimes is struggling with you know staying on their path mm -hmm. you know if you look back at your own story mm. what would you tell them Ooh, what i wish someone would have told me if i could go back like six seven years would be don't expect your art to pay you right it's okay to for it to grow into that mm. but don't rely on it to feed you like figure out the money thing <laughs> figure out the money thing if you need to sell mandazis on the side <laughs> do i don't it. know yeah if you want to be an influence on the side figure out the thing that's going to be a stable stream of income and then still do your music uh, but it will take the pressure off a lot of things if you're able to have a steady stream or an income stream of of different kinds even not just one yeah um but yeah that's probably what i would give as advice and it's not necessarily saying that now that's a plan b but it's just to support you and to take off the stress of where is money coming from because mm. you need money to be an artist you really do and it requires a huge investment yeah. you know all these albums you're recording all mm -hmm. these songs all these producers you're working yes. with all the videos you're shooting yes. Really artists are employers if you think about it you're employing a makeup artist a stylist a producer rehearsal space you're paying for it a band you're hiring them like you really need to be able to take care of yourself mm. and also your art so just seeing your art as this side almost like a business a side business but having this thing that's supporting you mm. really that's the biggest lesson. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and do you feel happy with um where you are right now after all the reflections mm -hmm. from covid time? Yeah. Do I feel happy with where I'm right now? The honest answer is no. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still finding my footing. Mm. I'm still finding my stability because it really rocked me. I, I feel like I went through what I would call the dark night of the soul. Really? Yeah. Oh it, my it God. was hectic, man. <laughs> it was hectic. But I, I'm yet to see an artist who hasn't been through <laughs> a hectic a period. hectic season yeah. like that. It's like it comes with the territory. Uh, but finding my center, finding my balance, figuring out, it's almost like I'm falling in love with music again. It's mm. something I'd given up. So when a dream dies, you really have to grieve it. You have to go through the heartbreak of it. So it's like losing someone. If yeah. you were to lose a friend or a parent, or a, you'd have to go through a season of grieving before... I don't even know if you feel like yourself again, but mm. you kind of have to find your stability again. I'm, and I'm on the way there. I don't think I'm fully there yet. Mm. So I can't say I'm happy, but I'm, I'm grateful for the progress. I'm grateful that I'm no longer in the pit. I see how mm. far I've come. And yeah, I guess I'm grateful to be alive. <laughs> and I'm happy that... I'm making music again. I'm I'll so say happy that, that you're <laughs> yeah. making music again. And... I think I knew you were making music again because I was at one of the listening parties for perform and hearing you, you know, was amazing. And then when you honored us with your, you know, presence to come to this podcast, I kind of felt like she's back or she's <laughs> almost ready to be back because yeah. there was a long break. And I, I did feel like you took a break, even though you didn't ever, you didn't really, or I don't know whether yeah. you really announced like you're taking a break, yeah. but I mean, everyone was a break, was on a break since COVID. Yeah. And I was even saying, I feel like 2023 was, since COVID was the first year when I felt like everything opened up, mm -hmm. you know, even Blackest and Wine came back. Yeah. I, it was just not the same mm -hmm. until recently that I felt it's almost the same. So a lot of things had changed and, you know, you coming here made me feel like, uh, Mayo is back. Hey. <laughs> So thank you so <laughs> much you for, for coming through. Um, you know, your flowers, receive your flowers. Receive you are so flowers. amazing. Thank you. You are so talented. We don't tell you that enough. <laughs> we don't have as artists who are as talented as you are. So we really need you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope to, you know, be of service as well. So feel free to reach out if yeah. you ever need any PR help or any support. Yeah. I would love to help where possible. Oh, that's um, really sweet. Thanks. And congrats on everything you've done. Any other thing you'd like to say before we wrap up? Um, thank you for having <laughs> me on your show. I'm such a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching you and watching your journey. So 
Um, thanks for being the light that you are as well. Thank you. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. I came here by faith because <laughs> it's been a while since I did an interview. I know. Yeah. That's why I'm saying thank yeah. you so much because <laughs> I knew that you accepted by faith. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I kind of felt like, like you accepted just because it was me and you were like, <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, the last uh, inter big interview I did was CTA clearing the airwaves by Richard Njau. Yeah. And it I, it was like a vulnerability overload. Really? So I'm too honest now. I don't have like a front to like look cool. So that's why I'm scared of interviews. I'll say exactly what is on my mind I now. love it. Like you usually ask people, <laughs> are you happy? Everyone's like, yes, I am. Yes, yes I, am. I am so happy. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's a bit risky because I'm like, I don't have a, an off switch for my vulnerability anymore. But thanks for this space. Thanks for being like my first interview in a minute. And I feel like now that I'm here, more will come. Yes, most but, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Thanks thank for this you. space, Aniko, and for caring so much about art and artistry in Kenya. Asante yeah. Mayo. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. And I thank everybody listening. This has been the amazing Mayonde. Please go on to social media, to all the DSP, stream her music. Even her past albums are so dope. Oh, Any content she's been part of is legendary. Mm -hmm. So keep looking out for my own day. She'll definitely come out with more <laughs> amazing content in the future. And it's on this note that we're ending the show today. Next week, welcome back. I'll have yet another amazing creative and artist who you'd love to know more about. Mm -hmm. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. <laughs> VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.